In this video, we're going to talk about domain and range. Now, this can be quite a challenging concept for people to grasp. To help you grasp this concept, I'm going to show you a practical example. So let's say a person has a ball in their hand and they throw it 20 meters in the air and catch it again. So right now we would say that the ball is zero meters above my hand. And when the ball is thrown, it gets as high as 20 meters above my hand. 20 meters. And then it falls and eventually comes back and I catch it. We can illustrate this situation using the graph at right. Our horizontal axis represents time, so we'll label that T for time, and our vertical axis represents the distance of the ball above my hand, so we will label that as D. When we look at the origin, we can see that when time was zero, the ball is zero meters above my hand. Then after two seconds, the ball was 20 meters above my hand. So it only took two seconds for it to reach its highest point. And then after four seconds, the ball is once again zero meters above my hand. So it took me four seconds to catch the ball after it had been thrown 20 meters in the air. Now, in case you haven't realized, this graph has had restrictions imposed upon it. What do I mean by that? Well, this is actually a downward facing parabola and parabolas should go on forever. They should have arrows coming down like so. Now, why did I not place the arrows on my downward facing parabola? Well, if this was the case, then the ball would eventually go below my hand as signified by the arrows to the left and right of my parabola. But this never happened. The ball started in my hand. It started at zero. And after four seconds, I caught the ball. So it never went below my hand. These arrows are not needed. Now, when we only keep a section of the graph and get rid of other parts of the graph, we call this restricting the domain of the graph. If someone was to ask you what the domain of your graph is, you would simply state that the domain is the set of t values such that t is less than or equal to 4 or more than or equal to 0. Essentially what we're saying is that we are only picking t values between 0 and 4 and we can see that on the graph we only have t values ranging from 0 to 4, we ignore all values less than 0 and all values greater than four. Otherwise, we'll have arrows coming down on each side, which make no sense in the context of this practical situation. Now, you may have noticed when we picked our values for our domain, we picked those values from the horizontal axis. What about the vertical axis? Well, that's where the range comes into play. So what would be the range for this graph. You may notice when looking at the vertical axis that our graph only exists between values of 0 through to 20. So our range would be values of d such that d is less than or equal to 20 or more than or equal to 0, which is essentially saying that d can be anywhere from 0 through to 20. Now, when I created this graph, I used a program called Desmos. I'll, I'll show you right now. You may notice that I've made my upside down parabola, but as yet, I haven't got rid of those red lines that go below the horizontal axis. So up here where I have my command, I'm going to use the curly brackets, remembering that my horizontal axis is my T axis. So I'm going to state that T can only be between 4 and 0. We now have a graph that only exists between t values of 0 and 4 and does not go below the horizontal axis. 
Desmos allows you to impose restrictions on the domain, but not on the range. Remembering that my vertical axis is the D axis, if I tried to restrict it between 0 and 20, what's Desmos going to do? Well, it just gives me an error. It only allows me to impose restrictions on the domain, not the range. So what are the technical definitions for domain and range? So I'm just going to pop to the next slide where I have those technical definitions. The domain of a function is the set of all input values, commonly x values, where the function exists. So what does that mean? Well, you might remember that the input values are always on the horizontal axis, in this case the t-axis. This function, or this graph of a function, only exists for t values between 0 and 4. So the input values where this function exists are t values between 0 and 4. That's our domain for this graph. When we look at the technical definition for range, it says that the range of a function is the set of all output values, commonly y values, where the function exists. Now the output values are always taken from the vertical axis, or in this case, the d axis. So this function, or this graph of a function, only exists for output values, or d values, between 0 and 20. So we write down that our range is the set of all d values between 0 and 20. Now that we've defined domain and range, I think it's time for us to complete some examples. We're going to complete two examples. We'll start with question A and then we'll complete question B. So all we need to do is find the domain and range for each graph. So we'll start by finding our domain. When we find the domain, we look at our horizontal axis, or in this case, our x-axis. For what values of x does this function exist? It exists between values of negative 4 and 4. We can see when we go beyond the negative 4 to the left, the graph doesn't exist, and also it doesn't exist when we go beyond the positive 4. So we're just going to state that the domain is the set of x values such that x is between 4 and negative 4. Alright, let's now move on to our range. This time we're going to look at our vertical axis and see where the function exists. We can see that it exists from this point all the way up to this point here. When we go beyond this point, this point being 12, you can see that the graph doesn't exist anymore. When we go below this point, which is at negative 4, you can see that the graph doesn't exist below there either. So our vertical axis is the y-axis, so we're going to say that our function exists for y values between 12 and negative 4. Anyway, let's now move on to question B. We'll start with our domain. That means we need to look at our horizontal axis and see where the function exists. I can see that it exists between 3 and negative 2. It never goes beyond the negative 2 to the left or to the right of the 3. So we're going to say that the domain is the set of x values that exist between 3 and negative 2. Now we need to be careful here. You might notice that we've got a hollow point. What does that mean? It actually means it doesn't exist at negative 2, but it exists at values approaching negative 2. We actually need to use the less than sign. It can't be less than or equal to negative 2. It cannot equal negative 2 because of the hollow point. Let's now calculate our range. This time we're looking at our vertical axis or our y-axis. We can see that the function exists between this point where y is 12 
and also this point where y is negative 8. So for our range, we will state that the function exists for y values between 12 and also negative 8, remembering that we need to use the less than sign, not the less than or equal to sign here. The reason we need to do that is because we have a hollow point here. So the function doesn't actually exist at negative 8, but it exists for all values leading up to negative 8. Anyway, that concludes our video on domain and range. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.